today on the Trend Out Loud podcast. For all his accusations, his defense is the statute of limitation has run out. Like, you're not even saying, like, no, I didn't do that. Don't accuse me of these things. He's like, yeah, I did it, but, yo, the statute of limitation has run out, which is so disgusting. What up? It's your boy, Trent Out Loud, and I'm back with another episode. All right, it's Tuesday morning. We made it through Monday. I hope you guys are having a great day because I got a good show set up for you guys. All right, I got five lead stories. Diddy's mom finally breaks her silence and talks about her son's legal problems. Diddy warns Justin Bieber on national TV. Lady Gaga speaks allegedly about Diddy's freak-offs. Foxy Brown responds to comments about Jay-Z. Drake takes subliminal shots at Jay-Z. And R. Kelly is denied by the Supreme Court. That's all in lead stories. When we're done with lead stories, we're going to jump into quick news. We're going to talk Kendrick Lamar, Canadian rapper, top five, Taylor Swift, Offset, Safari, Whitney Houston, and Kanye West has made it back into the headlines. After we're done with quick news, we're going to jump into question of the day, and then we'll close out, as we always do, with a little bit of sports news. Y'all know what time it is. Turn your TVs, your radio, or your devices up. I'm about to start this show. Let's go. Diddy's mother, Janice Combs, releases a statement regarding her son's legal troubles. She says, my son is not the monster they have painted him to be. Diddy's mother, Janice Combs, releases a statement to Local 10 News about her son's legal troubles. In a statement, she says, my son may have lied about domestic violence that was caught on video, but that doesn't mean he's guilty of the sexual assault he's accused of. This statement comes after a Houston-based attorney announced that he was representing 120 victims allegedly accusing Diddy of sexual misconduct. Mrs. Combs wrote, Watching the world make jokes and laugh at my son's life crumbling before his eyes is something I can never forget. It's truly agonizing to watch the world turn against my son so quickly and easily over lies and misconceptions without hearing his side and affording him the opportunity to present his side. She also goes on to say, The lies thrown at him are motivated by those seeking financial gain and not justice. So uh, this is actually a pretty lengthy statement. Uh, That article just maybe put out some highlights. Uh, there is another thing that I wanted to read you guys here. Um, I'm just going to go over it quickly. I come to you today as a mother that is devastated and profoundly saddened by the allegations made against my son, Sean Combs. It is heartbreaking to see my son judge not for the truth, but for a narrative created of lies. To bear witness what seems to be like a public lynching of my son before he has the opportunity to prove his innocence is a pain too unbearable to put into words. Like every human being, my son deserves to have his day in court to finally share his side and to prove his innocence. Listen, like Charlemagne said on The Breakfast Club today, every mother is going to say that of her son. But what I think that is really interesting about this statement um, and that part that I just read to you is she is, is highlighting what his lawyer said that Diddy is very adamant about proving his his innocence. And she didn't say this, but she's alluding to the fact that Diddy is going to take the stand. For those of you who know anything about the court system, it's always recommended like 99% of the time for you never to take the stand because the prosecution can come and cross-examine you and you get torn apart. It could be one or two things. Diddy really is innocent of all of these things and he literally cannot get caught up in anything or, or his lawyers feel like, Bro, you have no choice of winning. You sorry, you have no chance of winning this whatsoever. So, if you're going to go down, at least go down and throw caution to the wind and get up there and try to make the jury believe you as much as possible. Like I said a couple of podcasts ago, um listen, I I've following Diddy pretty much his entire career, uh you know, from the bad boy days, from Di- uh from um Mace and 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 Biggie and all of that and like I've said is that Diddy is not um uh you know, a producer, he's not a rapper. 
He is an entertainer. That is what he is best known for. And of course, a marketing genius from what he did with Ciroc and the, you know, Sean John and all his other brands. If anybody can um, uh, get on the stand and be convincing and win somebody over, it's Diddy. He definitely has the charisma and the personality to pull that off. However, with saying that, once you go up on that stand and you get caught lying one time, because he's already been caught lying before the Cassie thing came out, he was like, oh, this is all lies, this is all lies. And then, you know, we see the videotape of him not just hitting Cassie, like brutally beating her up. Something like that happens on the stands, it's over. It's it's done with, you know what I mean? So we'll see. But again, I found this very interesting that his mom is putting out the statement. And of course, you know, every single thing is orchestrated, right? Every single thing is, you know, he has the best political team, the best um, publicist. So there's a reason for everything that's going out. So um, Diddy is maintaining his innocence. He is fighting this. He's having his mom come out, his children come out and everything. Um, I think really that's really about it that, uh, like I said, it's, it's a big, um, it's a big statement. I'm not going to read everything, but it's really like, you know, the gist of it is he's a good person and history shows us how, um, individuals can be wrongly accused due to their past actions and mistakes. That's how she ends it. So, um, I'll post the, um, I'll post the, um, the statement up on my YouTube channel and on podcast for those who are not able to see it. If you want to pause it and read it for yourself, but Diddy's mom has finally broken her silence and, uh, she has come out and, you know, stood up for her son. And like I said, of course, of course, every mother would do that, but this is orchestrated. This is strategic. And this is another person other than his legal team saying he's innocent and he's going to fight all these charges. Okay, so uh, that was my first story about Diddy. Now let's get into something that's going out online. Where This is something that happened in the past, but it's resurfacing. Um, and it's about Diddy and Justin Bieber when they were on TV. I, th- I can't remember what talk show it was on, but um, let's go over to that story next. Sean Diddy Combs wants Justin Bieber to keep what took place during their hangouts under wraps, according to the resurfaced Jimmy Kimball clips. All right, I'm going to play the clip for you in a second. Um, but like I said, this is resurfaced. I couldn't remember what it was. It's Jimmy Kim- Kimball Live, so it wasn't that long ago. Um, but from the from the looks of how old Justin Bieber was, uh, maybe it's maybe around, I don't know, five or seven years ago-ish. Um, uh, last week I played for you guys the clip of Diddy and Justin Bieber when Bieber was actually at his house the day that they're talking about here where Bieber looks very like afraid almost, you know, he's 14 or 15 years old. Um, and Diddy's like, yo, Bieber and uh, Bieber and his friend are at my house for the weekend. We have Lambos. We're taking them out to parties. And, you know, uh, Diddy looks at Bieber and was like, Yo, what do you want to do this weekend? He's like, I don't know. Let's go out and get some girls. And he's 15 years old. So here is the follow-up to this, which is making uh, the round the rounds online now with Diddy and Justin on Jimmy Kimball. And listen to what Diddy says to Justin. Take a listen. He had the Lamborghini for a day or two, and he had access to the house. And he knows better than to be talking about the things that he does with Big Brother Puff on national television. <laughs> so like I said in yesterday's podcast for uh, 347, um, Diddy had legal custody of Usher and, uh, Usher had signed Justin Bieber. So part of the, you know, onboarding training that Usher went through when he was younger, which was living with Diddy, he sent Justin Bieber there. Uh, Usher sent Justin Bieber to be at Diddy's house. Also, what we talked about yesterday was a six year old, uh, kid being at one of Diddy's freak offs. And there's a, there's a history of, teenage boys being at Diddy's house and you know aside from the allegations of you know him being involved with some of these um boys we also talked about that last week you know if that is true or not true we'll leave that up to the courts the fact that Diddy and this is a fact I mean we see it on tape the fact that Diddy has these teenage boys at his house and he's letting them drive or even you know 
saying that he's letting them drive. I mean, we haven't seen Justin Bieber behind the steering wheel of the Lambo, but why say these things? Why allow them to say these things publicly? You know what I mean? Why are they hanging out with Diddy? Like, this is just bad. You know, it's just, it's just a, it's just a bad um, image to portray of yourself. And of course, bad for teenage boys to be around. In yesterday's podcast, we played a clip where Diddy comes out at a party and he's on a balcony and he's standing up and as uh, at his all white party and he's like, all right, you, the kids got one more hour. Then you guys got to go home because the party is going to turn wild. And it's the type of party you guys are going to want to come to when you're older. And it's like, why would you say something like that when kids are around? At that time, there was a kid there that was like six or seven years old. So there's, I'm sure there was other kids. And like I said yesterday, like the kids now is going to turn to his parents and it's like, yo, what does Diddy mean by that? You know? So like I said, the allegations of him doing things with teenagers will wait for that to, to, to be brought out in court or, or in civil trials. Um, but the fact that we know that these teenage boys are around in his house back in the days is just wrong. That alone you could be condemned for. You know what I mean? So like we just talked about with his mom making these statements, you know, he's not painting a good picture for himself. And that's why I don't think it would be a good idea for him to get on the stand because the prosecutor will bring these things up and the jury, you just don't look good, bro. You know what I mean? Um, all right. So now, now, now that we're done with Justin Bieber, let's jump over to, uh, Lady Gaga. Now, just to be fair, Lady Gaga is talking about her experience in the music industry. Um, she's not naming any names, but again, this clip is going super viral online because people are thinking she could be talking about Diddy, but she doesn't say his name. Let's go to, uh, to that story next. Lady Gaga speaks about Diddy's freak offs. All right. So just right away, that headline is misleading because again, she doesn't mention his name, but I will play some clips of it. I can't play the whole thing for copyright reasons. And there's like a trigger warning on it, but, um, I'll play some clips of it and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Take a listen. Said to me, take your clothes off. And I said no. And they told me they were going to burn all my music. They didn't stop asking me. And then I just froze and I just, I don't even remember. <laughs> and I will not say his name. I do not ever want to face that person again. So, of course, a lot of people are like, oh, my gosh, Lady Gaga, speak out. You know, it's, you know say his name, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and from what I know, she hasn't. Um, and like I said, just want to say it one more time. She does not say Diddy's name anywhere in that clip. I searched online and she's not mentioning Diddy. But why it's important is that, uh, like we spoke about last week, is that, um, uh, I think it, uh, it was, I think it was Jaguar, right? And it's somebody else too. Uh, one of the, uh, lawyers were saying that Diddy, of course, is not the only one in the industry accused of doing things like this to women. And, um, somebody called out Clive Davis, who was actually the person who gave Diddy his first label deal. Clive Davis actually also discovered Whitney Houston and, um, uh, Alicia Keys. All right. He's huge, uh, in the music industry. One of the original, like, you know, kingpins of the music industry. So Clive Davis and also called out, uh, Lu uh Lucian Grave, I think his name is, and who he's in charge of universal music. So could Lady Gaga be talking about one of those guys who are implemented allegedly in this whole Diddy ring? And they were saying, uh, that, you know, Diddy learned this from people like Clive Davis and Lucian Grain. And, um, you know, it, it, this is bigger than Diddy, right? So, is Lady Gaga talking about Diddy? Is Lady Gaga talking about Clive Davis or some, obviously it's somebody in the music industry, right? Um, and like we do always keep talking about almost every day is that sooner or later, we're going to find out who are these other people that were at Diddy's parties in these closed door sessions. Who's on these freak off tapes. We talked about yesterday that Hollywood is shopping around, um, those tapes. There's two networks that are interested in buying those tapes from the person that have has it. So we are going to see an explosion from the music industry and Hollywood. And um, hopefully we get some of these names. Hopefully Gaga, you know, decides to speak out and say who this guy is that was threatening her to, to do these things. Right. Um, but for now it's all just alleged and hearsay.
So, uh, all right. So now that we're done with Gaga, let's jump over to Foxy Brown and her. We actually talked about this yesterday too. All my podcasts are connected. All right. So make sure you stay tuned always daily. I'm always following up on things that I said, but, um, I'm really, uh, happy that Foxy Brown followed up on this statement, um, about Jay Z. All right. Let's go to, um, Foxy Brown and her comments about Jay Z. Foxy Brown isn't planning on coming for Jay-Z anytime soon. Reports have been swirling that Foxy Brown is getting ready to expose Jay-Z and share her story about their history. A screenshot of text messages has been making its rounds where Foxy Brown allegedly said, My story will shock you to the core. I don't play the victim, but I had to step away from my sanity or I would have been dead. All right, we talked about that yesterday. Now, here is the interesting part. Before the rumors got too far, Foxy Brown shut it down on her Instagram stories. She posted the text message and she wrote, Stop playing with my name, dying for a comment. You can't spin me with the sucker-ish to take Hove down. Better ask about the cloth I'm cut from. She also addresses a fan who told her to be careful if she speaks out about Jay-Z. Foxy Brown replied, Y'all want me to be anti-Hove so bad. By the way, post that. So, okay, a couple of things to break down there. One, just the fan warning her about Jay-Z. It's alleged that Jay-Z is worse than Diddy. They've been, you know, friends for years and years and years. And there's a lot of people, Jaguar Ray, Claudia Jordan, a lot of people that have said that, you know, Jay-Z is the same kind of guy like Diddy, but he's just smarter and quieter about it, but is probably even more dangerous. So that's why the fan is like, yo, be careful. Now, let's dig a little deeper. What I said yesterday about Foxy Brown uh, allegedly just putting in her stories like, hey, I got a story to tell. Like, I had to take a, take a step back or else I would have been dead. What I was saying to her, what I was saying about that was what she could be doing is kind of like what Cassie did where in November, and this is fact, Cassie went to Diddy, well, with her lawyers, uh, Cassie and her lawyers went to Diddy behind closed doors and was like, yo, I'm going to write a book and uh, it's going to be a tell-all book. You could pay me $30 million right now and I won't put it out. I won't make anything public. Diddy was like, yo, whatever. No one's going to believe you. A couple of days later, she put it out. It was the craziest thing online everywhere. And then 24 hours later, allegedly he paid her. $30 $30 million because she took the class auction suit off. So what I'm thinking is that maybe Foxy is maybe doing this behind the scenes. Maybe again, just this is the conspiracy theory theorist in me. Maybe Fox, Foxy Brown went to Jay-Z and was like, yo, I have, you know, a story that I want to tell. And he was like, nah, I don't want to pay you. And then she maybe put a little thing in her stories to see the reaction to maybe scare him. I'm not saying that's what happened. That's what's happening, but that's what could be going down. And then for those of you who didn't watch yesterday's episode, just to give you context, if you're wondering why is Foxy Brown connected to Jay-Z, uh, Jay-Z was the one who discovered Foxy Brown and used to write for her, like how Biggie discovered uh, Little Kim, all right? So Jay and Foxy Brown has been tight since they were young. And I mean, Jay was like 25 when he came into game. And I think Foxy Brown was around 15 at the time. And there's, of course, you know, hearsay that, he was sleeping with Foxy Brown back in the day when she was younger and et cetera, et cetera. So it, if anybody has dirt on Jay-Z, it is Foxy Brown. But is it true that she's just, you know, being a ride or die chick? I was like, yo, I don't care about money. I don't care about nothing. The, co- the cloth that I'm cut from, I'll never come after Jay-Z. Has Jay-Z already paid her off and was like, yo, yo let's not even play this game. Like, oh, you'll never know what goes on behind closed doors. You only find out when the communications break down. And like I said, apparently... People are saying behind the scenes that Jay does not want to be exposed like uh, like Diddy and he's paying everybody off and Beyonce and all of this stuff. I mean, who knows, man? But um, that is the Foxy Brown. And then uh, lastly, lastly, um, we are going to talk about <laughs> Drake taking shots at Jay-Z. See how I tied that together there? Um, so Jay, uh, Drake has been putting some subliminal um, hints to Jay-Z in his stories, in his IG stories, and I got that for you. It's literally going viral online. Let's uh, go to the Drake story. Drake shares photo of Solange post-elevator fight with Jay-Z, followed by an Aaliyah tribute. Okay, 
This is super weird and super random, okay? Um, actually, hold on. There's a little article. I'll give you more context. Uh, Drake is raising eyebrows, eyebrows on Instagram after he posted a photo of Solange sitting in a car following her infamous elevator incident with Jay-Z in 2014. Don't worry. I'll give you guys context for those of you who don't know this story, okay? Uh, while it's... While it's unclear what prompted the rapper to share this image, many speculate that it could be a subliminal shot at Jay-Z. Shortly after Drake posted that picture, uh, Drake then posted a nostalgic photo of the late singer Aaliyah holding a dog, further fueling online conversation. Some fans believe it could be tied to their long-running rumors and conspiracies involving Jay-Z and Aaliyah. I'll give you guys context for that. Hold on. Uh, the timing of Drake's post um, has people talking, especially considering Jay-Z's role in selecting Kendrick Lamar for the 2025 Super Bowl halftime show, a spot that some people f- should have been reserved for Lil Wayne. Nicki Minaj has hinted that Jay-Z might be harboring animosity towards Birdman, Drake, and herself, though Drake has mostly stayed quiet on the matter. Okay, a lot to unpack there. So, First, let's talk about Solange and the elevator, for those who don't know. 2014, Solange attacked Jay-Z in an elevator. Beyonce was there, Solange and Jay-Z, and Solange attacked, slapped, and was kicking Jay-Z. Jay-Z didn't do anything to her physically. He kind of just held their hand and held her away. The camera footage was caught, and they exit the elevator. None of them have ever spoken about it. They have hinted very subliminally, on tracks um i think beyonce said uh something about like a billion dollars in the elevator or whatever but no they've never spoke about it publicly all right so that's that then let me tell you so so it could be where hey foxy brown was talking about jay-z you know so maybe drake is like hey let me put some more pressure on the jay-z thing 50 cent a couple of weeks ago put a picture out about jay-z too like i said there's a lot of people that think jay-z is the next one to be exposed so maybe drake is like oh you want to you, you want to put Kendrick Lamar on Super Bowl and embarrass me? Yo, I got money. I got people in the industry too. Be careful of how you're moving out here. So, so maybe that was a subliminal shot. Um, I actually have the picture of Solange. I'm going to put it up on my YouTube channel um, and Spotify for those who want to see it, who's watching the video. Anyway, so that is the explanation with Solange, all right? Solange, Beyonce's sister. Now, the connection with Aaliyah is, is that Dame Dash and Aaliyah, Dame Dash, um, y'all know who Dame Dash is, right? Rockefeller Records, Jay-Z's ex-best friend, um, who's now in court trying to sell reasonable doubt, but that's a whole other story for another day. So Dame and Aaliyah were together, and apparently Jay was interested in Aaliyah. By the way, she was underage at this time too. Don't forget she married R. Kelly when she was 15 years old. (laughs) Ironically, my next story is about R. Kelly Stay tuned. I'll explain everything. Um, so yeah, uh, so, so Dame and Jay Z, apparently that was their breakup. That's the reason why Rockefeller broke up was Jay Z and Dame Dash were fighting over our, uh, were fighting over Aaliyah. Again, she was underage at the time. So, um, and then we all know the, the beef between, you know, Drake and Kendrick Lamar and then Jay Z putting Kendrick Lamar on the Super Bowl halftime show. So, to tangle web we weave right like you know is drake and, and also to drake uh i i put this out uh on yesterday's podcast where drake was in toronto on stage saying yo uh you know be careful who your friends are your friends will stab you in your back then the next day he puts out a post about with solange and Aaliyah. so is this coming at jay-z we both know we both know we all know that Nicki minaj was going hard on jay-z couple of weeks ago when the whole Super Bowl thing came out. So maybe this is Drake's turn. Again, this is all alleged, all conspiracy theory. We'll see if this comes to fruition one day. All right. Now, this has nothing to do with um, Diddy and uh, Jay-Z, but uh, there is a quick story that came out about R. Kelly being um, denied um, in the Supreme Court that I want to tell you guys about and give you an update. So let's jump over um, and talk to you guys about R. Kelly. R. Kelly appeal for sexual crimes conviction was denied by the Supreme Court. R. Kelly's latest court move was unsuccessful for him. On Monday, October the 7th, the Supreme Court denied the 
Sorry, the 57-year-old singer's attempt to overturn his convictions after he was found guilty of multiple sex crimes, according to CNN. He was previously sentenced to 30 years in prison after being convicted of sex trafficking in New York back in 2021. Two years later, he was sentenced to 23 years in prison for child, uh, I can't say this on YouTube, but you guys know what that is, right? child conviction. Um, in his appeal, R. Kelly claimed that the statute of limitation blocked the claims against him. Federal prosecutors never officially respond. However, the Supreme Court did, and it is not clear why the Supreme Court made their ruling. So we did talk about this when this was happening, you know, back in the day, I think like last year or so. Um, and what I find really disgusting about this, and I get it because it's, it's the law and you know, if you're in jail for 50 years, you're going to try to do whatever you're going to do to get out. But R. Kelly's defense for all his accusations with, again, I don't want to repeat them because I'm going to get flagged on YouTube, but all his accusations, his defense is the statute of limitation has run out. Like, you're not even saying like, I didn't do that. Don't accuse me of these things. He's like, yeah, I did it, but Yo, the statute of limitation has run out, which is so disgusting. You know, I don't even know why there's a statute of limitation on crimes like that. Like that is crazy. There should be no statute of limitation. If you get proven guilty of that 50 years later, you should be going to jail, you know, totally disgusting. So I don't know how the Supreme Court, it's a, it doesn't say why the Supreme Court ruled that way. Um, Cause from what I know, when the statute of limitation is the statute of limitation, there's nothing you can do about it. That's why, um, Bill Cosby is out. So I don't know really what happened. They didn't say maybe something will come out. I tried to do some research and contact some uh, lawyers to find out more about this. I haven't heard from anybody yet. Um, oh, you know what? I should ask Megan. Megan will know about this. I'm sure she's going to post about it um, and uh, and give us some details. Um, but uh, I'm actually just trying to um, see go on Megan's um, uh, Instagram right now to find out if she posted about this. But uh, I'll follow up and let you guys know uh, all right. I just checked. She hasn't posted about this. So, um, I will, um, yeah, I'll follow up with this. Let's jump over into quick news guys. Like I told you at the top, I got a bunch of great stories and quick news. So hang with me. Let's jump over to quick news right now. All right. This brings us to quick news. Ring my bell. Kendrick Lamar and Rihanna have declined the offer to headline Coachella in 2025, according to Bloomberg. Kendrick Lamar and Rihanna passed on headlining Coachella in 2025. The festival is looking for a big name to recover from a couple of down years. Kendrick Lamar is scheduled to perform at the Super Bowl in 2025 and plans to tour major stadiums. And Rihanna is head of a growing business empire and doesn't need the money or exposure. So... For those of you who love going to Coachella, uh, Coachella, y'all know for the past couple of years, Coachella has been whack. I mean, I think since like Beyonce headlined, it, it hasn't really been doing much. So, um, it's, it's, you know, changing of the guards, man. Things are changing. If Kendrick Lamar is turning it down, Rihanna is, um, turning it down. I don't know who they got left, you know, right? So, um, we'll see who's going to headline Coachella 2025. All right. In our second quick story. Top five goes off after being asked if he's scared of Kendrick Lamar and if he won the rap beef against Drake on a recent podcast. All right. Um, top five Canadian rapper told you guys about him. I think last week or two weeks ago, uh, he is out free man after uh, getting a, uh, a serious charge. And uh, he's been making his rounds on all Canadian blogs, all Canadian media. And uh, he has made it known that he doesn't want anybody from L.A. thinking they could just roll up to Toronto. Um, especially Kendrick Lamar. And then the podcaster was like, yo, are you afraid of Kendrick? And he goes off. Take a listen. I'm not scared. Scared of what? To Kendrick, your money. Kendrick, Kendrick and his people? Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar? Yeah, you're scared of Kendrick? Tell him to come to Toronto. Switch cheese. What will happen if he comes to Toronto? I'll, I'll get the low, put on my Nike Tech Black. So why'd you get us a driver? Put the window down, it is what it is. Get some for sure. Where's Drive by King? Drive by King. Yo, I don't like this whole Toronto, LA beef thing and stuff. Like, I don't like it, man. You know what I mean? But... Yo, this, you gotta let the streets do what the streets are gonna do, but yo, I just, I don't like it. This could turn into something serious and 
you know, I'm bi-coastal, man. You know, man, I'm Canadian. I'm in the U.S. all the time. You know what I mean? I'm going to be in New York this weekend. I want to be, I'm, I'm going to be on stage with Charlemagne and Tyrese and Dr. Alfie. I want to be proud to be like, yo, I'm Canadian and not have any beef. All right. So Kendrick, top five, Drake and all that. Squash that. Let's just get back to the music. All right. And our third quick story, Taylor Swift surpasses Rihanna as the world's richest female musician. And she has a net worth of $1.6 billion. Congratulations is in order to Taylor Swift. According to a recent report from Forbes, Taylor has surpassed Rihanna as the world's richest female musician. It's also reported that the Shake It Off singer snagged the title previously held by Rihanna just a year after obtaining billionaire status from her music and live shows. Taylor Swift, 34 years old, is now worth a reported $1.6 billion thanks to her tour, which concludes in December. Additionally, it's noted that Taylor made history as the first musician to become a millionaire, mainly off of music sales. Rihanna, who is 36 years old, now lands at number two on the list with a net worth of $1.4 billion, becoming the second wealthiest female artist. She previously held a net worth of $1.7 billion due to the success of her cosmetic line, Fenty Beauty and lingerie brand Savage Fenty. Um, yo, shout out to both of them. Y'all know I'm a big Rihanna fan, so I want to see her regain this title. I don't know. The ending of the article said she was at 1.7 and now she's at 1.4. Y'all know how business in the stock market fluctuates. Let's hope that Rihanna um, wins back the title from Taylor Swift. But no hate to Taylor Swift and the Swifties, all right? Don't, don't, don't come for me, man. I just, yo, I just more of a Rihanna fan. All right, and our fourth quick story. Offset surprises Cardi B at NYC Club, sparking awkward encounter amid divorce. Uh, Offset has made an unexpected appearance at the same nightclub as Cardi B, creating a seemingly uncomfortable situation. Clip circulating online show Cardi B living her best life at the Dream Hospitality Group party at the Stadford Room early Sunday morning, October the 6th, where she was enjoying drinks, dancing, and partying. However, things took a turn when the DJ announced that Offset was in the club. Despite the surprise encounter, the exes apparently didn't interact during the time in the club, and as the video shows, they positioned them opposite sides of the venue. Offset gazed into the crowd while Cardi B appeared to be focused on her phone and seemingly texting. So we talked about this last week where... Artie, uh, Artie, uh, Cardi B was, uh, has allegedly been accused of cheating on Offset while she was pregnant and that created a whole big controversy. But, um, yeah, it looks like they are divorcing. It looks like they're living their own lives. And, you know, was, was Offset just rolling up to a random club that his wife was at or did he know that she was there? Remains to be seen. I, I think he probably knew that she was there, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if they end up saying divorce. And for those of you who don't know, they have said that they were going to divorce probably around 10 times already, but you know, we'll see what happens. All right. In our fifth quick story, more relationship drama. Safari was at Gag City getting his whole life. Um, I got a little clip. I'll show you guys. Um, everybody was talking about this. Um, it was yesterday over the weekend. Sorry, it was over the weekend. I don't know why I didn't get it in yesterday's show, but um, Gag City, uh, Nicki Minaj, and uh, Safari showed up in a, in a jean vest. For those of you who don't know, Safari and Nicki Minaj used to be an item. He used to write for her. They were a group, I think, at one time even. And, of course, Nicki Minaj is, you know, is she married to Kenneth Petty? I don't know if she's married or whatever, but her baby daddy, they're together. So it was like, why is Safari showing up? And everybody was dragging him online. So he posted yesterday a clip of all of the barbs loving him saying yeah you guys are hating on me but all the barbs still love me here's a little clip hey they showing love at the gag city tour what's up what's up all right in our sixth speed story iman shumfrit denies amber rose dating rumors he says that's my people during an interview with tmz iman confirmed that he and amber are just friends we went to College Hill together, he said, when asked if they were romantically involved. And he answered, nah, that's my people. This comes after the two were seen on the beach together in Miami. We talked about this two weeks ago. Um, I don't believe it. <laughs> the pictures that I put up um, two weeks ago in the uh, podcast episode, I don't remember what number it was, but they were on the beach. 
Nobody else was really around. They were sitting down together and then they were photographed walking away together. I don't know, bro. And they were very, they weren't holding hands or anything, but I don't believe that that's just his people. We'll, we'll see what comes up. You know how celebs like, oh, that's my friend. That's my friend. Before you know it, she ends up pregnant. So we'll see. All right. In our seventh quick story, Sissy Houston, Grammy award winning artist and mother of Whitney Houston passed away at age 91. Sissy Houston, the mother of the late, great Whitney Houston and two-time uh, Grammy Award winner, has passed away at age 91. She died on Monday morning at her home in New Jersey, where she was receiving hospice care for Alzheimer's disease, as confirmed by her daughter-in-law, Pat Houston, and the Associated Press. The renowned gospel singer was with her family at the time of her passing. Our hearts are filled with pain and sadness. We lost the matriarch of our family, Pat Houston said in a statement. Mother Cece has been a strong and towering figure in our lives, a woman of deep faith and conviction, ministry and community. Her more than seven decade career in music and entertainment will remain at the forefront of our hearts. Um, Yeah, a lot of people don't know that Whitney's mom is a Grammy award winning artist, you know? So um, anyway, shout out to Cece Tyson. It's really sad, but hey, you know, she at least lived till 91. So she had a successful and fruitful life and got to see her daughter become one of the biggest, um, you know, singers in the world, right? So at least she had a great life. Shout out to uh, Sissy Houston. All right. In our eighth and final quick story, Kanye West and his wife, Bianca, reportedly on the verge of divorce, Ye allegedly planning to move to Tokyo following their split. All right, another one bites the dust. It looks like Kanye West and his wife of two years, Bianca, is heading for Splitsville, according to DMZ. DMZ is claiming to have direct knowledge that Ye and B have been telling people that they were going to be separated for weeks. Sorry, that they have been separated for weeks. While there has been no confirmation of what may have caused this split, sources are claiming Ye plans to move to Tokyo and divorce Bianca. It's important to note that these two have not been spotted together in a while, and they were last seen publicly on September the 20th while doing some shopping together. All right, September the 20th? I mean, it's only mid-October. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's like that dire straight, but TMZ probably has some more information. I'm not really surprised by this. That never really looked like a serious marriage to to me. That looked like, uh, you know, let me just get back at Kim and let me have like a nice girl on my arm that wants to walk around half naked all the time um, and help me get some breasts. I mean, but that's been Kanye's MO. He did that with um, Amber Rose. He did that with um, Kim Kardashian. He did that with Bianca. Like, that's just Kanye, right? It's, it's part of his uh, publicity campaign, man. But hey, yo, shout out to Kanye and B. All right, that brings us to question of the day. What is worse than a heartbreak? All right, uh, Keisha82 said the lie that caused it. That's actually hilarious. Well, not funny, but hilarious. Um, Stanfra Sierra said running out of weed. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, Rosemary said being broke. Um, I don't know if I agree with that, man. Like, but if you're broke, you could still be happy. I understand, like, a lot of people attribute, uh, you know, money to happiness. But if you're broke and you're in love, I think you're better off than if you have money and you have a broken heart. You know, like, that sucks, bro. Um, somebody, another person said being broke. Another person said, a uh, hairstylist canceling your appointment before an important event. Yo, it's definitely not as bad as a broken heart, but trust me, I got my hair braided from time to time. And if you have an event and you have a planned hairstyle and your hairstylist cancels, whew, that's a problem. Thank the Lord that my hairstyle is never canceled on me. All right. Melania82 said, to lose a parent or a sibling, that's a nightmare. All right. We're supposed to be having fun here. We don't really take question of the day that seriously. We're here for jokes. Um, Sharania82 said, being absolutely broke. <laughs> um, somebody said, spending money on nasty food. That is a big pet peeve of mine. That's why I don't like to go to like random restaurants. If I find a restaurant that I like, I'll stick to it. I hate spending money on food I don't like. I will send it back and they're like, is something wrong with it? I'm like, no, I just don't like it. Um, all right. Uh, Monica said, uh, cooper sorry, co-parenting with the person you are healing from. 
that that's that is my biggest nightmare. <laughs> that's why I'm single and I don't have kids. Um, pretty young brown thing said, waking up to your leftovers being eight. <laughs> Yo, that's a good one, actually. And actually, that is the worst. If you have something in the fridge or in the cupboard, I mean, it doesn't really happen to me a lot because I live alone. But if I have something that I want and my uh, my niece or nephews come over and they eat it and I come the next day and they're and it's gone, that's bad. Not as bad as heartbreak, but it's bad. Um, nothing worse than being broke. Job application, asking for too much information, forgetting to pray to God that woke you up this morning, being hungry as hell, and then going to a restaurant and the food is trash. Um, somebody said, get having the wrong baby father. That's hilarious. Apple taking my last $9.99 of the $13 I had planned to use at a restaurant for food, spending money on bad food. That's hilarious. Accidentally leaving your plate out overnight. Good answers, guys. I like this answer. Uh, yeah, good one. Uh, let me know uh, your answer to your question. Answer to today's question of the day. What is worse than a heartbreak? Send me an email, Trent at CFQR600.com. Comment below this YouTube video or send me a DM at any of my social uh, media accounts at Trent Out Loud. All right, that brings us to sports news. Um, this is a statement from um, Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson does not think Bronny is ready for the NBA. And he is quoted as saying, if I'm Bronny, I would tell my dad to just let me play, play in the G League all season so I could develop. All right, so this happened Sunday night. Uh, this was the first time that a father and son has ever been on the floor during an NBA game. It is preseason, but nevertheless, it was history. And I'm sure when it happens in the season, people will be talking about it again. So uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Bronny played 16 minutes. And of that 16 minutes, he got, I think, two rebounds and no points scored. So, of course, everyone is like, yo, this is beautiful. This is nice. Father and son, blah, 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 blah. But he's not ready for the NBA. Um, I didn't watch him, but I have watched him play before. And while he's an okay player, I have to agree with people. I And I've said this millions of times before. I just don't think it's a smart move for him. When you think about Bronny himself, it's just not good for him. I don't think it's good for him as you know, mentally, uh, for his basketball game, just for everything, just life in itself. Like, it's almost like, how's it feel like playing with your dad? How's it feel like being on a court, bringing it your dad? Like, he's at press conference, like, how's it being with your dad? Like, his whole life is going to be in his dad's shadow. Like, you know how difficult that's going to be where it's like nobody cares about you and they're just caring about you because you're LeBron's son? You know what I mean? Like, gosh, for him, I would want him to be his own person. So, I understand LeBron's dream of playing with his son. It's beautiful, but it doesn't feel like that's his dream. Like, it feels like it's more LeBron's dream and not Bronny's dream. Anyways, you guys call it however you see it. Um, all right, that is it for the Tuesday uh, show. Thank you so much for kicking with me. Uh, before you go, I just want to remind you of all the ways to keep up to date with the show. For those of you who are watching or listening on podcast platforms, please try to check me out. Monday through Friday from 11 to 12 on CFQR600.com or 600 AM if you're in the Montreal area on your radio stations. Uh, we do play the Trend Out Loud podcast daily. We mix it in with 90s and 2000s hip-hop and R&B. I select the music so you know it's dope. Uh, but try to check us out, man. It's a great hour and a great way for you to just take a break from your day, get your entertainment and viral news while listening to some dope music from the 90s and 2000s. Vice versa, if you're used to listening to this show on CFQR600 and you can't, Always catch the Trend Out Loud podcast from 11 to 12. Do not worry. We understand you got things to do. You got Zoom meetings. You got kids to take care of. You're busy. That is why we upload every podcast to YouTube or podcast platform. So just go to your desired site, type in Trend Out Loud. The show will pop up. Don't forget to hit the follow or subscribe button so you can be notified every time we upload a new show. And if you're like me and you like to watch your podcast on video, there's YouTube, but also Spotify now supports video. So you can check us out on Spotify or YouTube. Um, you can check me out on any social media platforms. It's always the same handle at Trend Out Loud. Don't forget to follow the media company, Exo City Media on Instagram. 
And lastly, for those of you who are on CFQR 600, stay tuned for the midday mix with my homeboy, Don Smoove, always dropping the hits. And for the rest of y'all, I will see you tomorrow. It's hump day. I know it's Tuesday, but the weekend is close. Hump day is near. I'll see y'all tomorrow, man. Peace. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, Turn Out Loud. Peace.